Hopefully you're feeling comfortable with the law of sines and cosines by now. Now we're going to use them to solve application problems, and we're going to learn another way of computing the area of a triangle. So let's start with an altitude problem. Now you won't always be given pictures, but we're starting it easy, and I do like to have a ruler around for these. So I do like to also go ahead and draw my own triangles. So since I have the picture, I have an idea what it's going to look like. I don't have to wait. I'll go ahead and get my triangle drawn. And that way I can label it as I'm reading through the problem. So. Two radar stations are located 20 miles apart. Okay, 20 miles, I got that. The angle of elevation by the first station is 35 degrees. Well, just because the problem, the illustration I got has the 35 degrees over here, I'll put the 35 degrees over here. And just because they named the side across from that one A, I'll name the side across from that one A. You have power. You can name them what you want, and you can label whichever one you want. This is 15 degrees, and I'm going to label that B just because I like for it to have a name. And then we'll name this Gamma because it's across from the other side and we have A and we have B, so the other one would be C. So we want to determine the altitude of the aircraft. So that's this length right here. So we're going to create a right angle down here, but I don't know the length of this side because I don't know exactly where that height lives. Well, I know... 15 degrees, I know 35 degrees, and I know this one side, so I have angle, side, angle, which is a job for the law of sines. Anytime you have two angles, it's a job for the law of sines. So, I can figure out the measure of this other angle. It is 180 minus... 15 minus 35, which is 130. So now I can use either angle to find the length of one of the sides. You can do it either way that you want. And let's check. So I found A. So this time I'm going to find B just to be fun. So Sine of 130 degrees over 20 miles has to be equal to sine of 15 degrees over B miles. Cross multiplying tells me that B is equal to 20 times the sine of 15. divided by sine of 130. And I get 6.757. Okay, now I have a right triangle. I look at 35 degrees, I know the hypotenuse of this right triangle. I would really like to know opposite. So sine of 35 degrees is equal to opposite, which is the height, over hypotenuse, which is 6.76. I'll write it down correctly eventually. So the height is 6.7 times sine of 35.
and that gives me 3.87 and I got 3.88 so same thing because this rounds to 3.88 So, you need to find the height. Use one side and angle to find the opposite side. That's going to be the hypotenuse of a right triangle. And then use sine of that right triangle to find the height, the opposite. Try this one. you got to draw the picture yourself for this one. So you've got a blimp flying over a football stadium. How'd it go? You're always going to end up having to use both angles. You use one angle to find the opposite side. So I used angle B to find the length of side B. And then this triangle was getting kind of crowded, so I pulled it out and I drew the right triangle whose height was equal to opposite and hypotenuse was 172.3 and this angle is 70 degrees so now I use the other angle, angle A and sine of 70 is height over hypotenuse so 161 yards Here's another one. Now, look at the picture. You're given a picture on this one. It's different. We don't have angle, side, angle. We have side, angle, side. So think about who that's a job for. We have a sassy triangle. Sassy triangles are jobs for law of cosines. So, the side I know, 800, plus the other side I know, 900, both squared, minus 2 times the product, times the cosine of the angle that lives between them, and I got 978.5 feet. So, one of the common applications of laws of sines and cosines is when we are navigating. So let's talk about how we define bearings. A bearing provides a direction as north or south and then another compass direction. So it'll be north a number of degrees east or west or south a number of degrees east or west. So it means you start going north or south and then you give a number of degrees that you shift off of that course. If it just says southwest, then the angle's 45 degrees right in the middle between the two directions. So just for practice, if Megan starts at a point and goes in the direction, what is her bearing? So she's going off in the northeasterly direction. So we start with north. We're in the northeast quadrant. Your primary direction is north. And then you see how many degrees east of north is she going. And it was 70 degrees, so it's north, 70 degrees east. Now, if you want to say it as 70 degrees east of north, if that helps, then the second direction comes first, 70 degrees east of north, or north, and then you move 70 degrees east. So let's look at an example. And I gave you the picture for this first one. A boat leaves a port and travels directly north for 10 miles, turns 20 degrees west of north, and travels another 8 miles. How far from port is the boat? So, let's pretend like the picture is not there and practice drawing it. So, first I draw my line that's going directly north, because this one started with the boat going directly north. And that was 10 miles. 
Now, it stops right here after 10 miles, and I'm going to draw a little dashed line here. After that, it turns 20 degrees west, so I'm going to call this 20 degrees. And it travels for another 8 miles. So this is 8 miles. So now I'm going to label this angle here, and I didn't give myself enough room, so I'll put it over here. That's 20 degrees. So if this is 20 degrees, that means this angle is 160 degrees, because straight lines have an angle of 180. Now my goal is to figure out zoop, how far it is to get home. So I'm going to let D be the distance home. So now I look at my triangle. I have side, angle, side. I'm feeling sassy again. That's a job for law of cosines. So I want D. D is going to be equal to the square root of 8 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 8 times 10 times the cosine of 160 degrees. So second square root 8 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 8 times 10 times cosine of 160 degrees. And that gives me 17.7 miles. Let's see the pretty answer. Oh, good, we got it right. So, let's do another one. This one's your turn. See if you can draw this picture. This time we have two boats departing from the same dock. I would probably put that dock at the origin. A is traveling northeast, and B is traveling southeast. So you're going to need the right-hand side of the plane. Ended up pretty much like the last one. So we had the two boats departing. I started north, and then I moved 30 degrees east of north. I moved 57 degrees east of south for the boat B. Boat A was traveling along at 4 miles per hour, so in two hours it traveled 8 miles. Boat B was traveling along at 18 miles per hour. So in two hours, it had traveled 36 miles. So I wanted the distance between them. I had side, angle, side. That's a job for law of cosines. So it's the square root of 8 squared plus 36 squared minus 2 times 8 times 36 times the cosine of the angle that lives between them. Next, we're going to learn about Heron's formula. Heron's formula is used when we know the lengths of all the sides. So we had one formula for area. Remember, area, if we had a side angle side triangle, we could have used this side times that side times the sine of 93 degrees to get our area. But what if we didn't know any of the angles, we only knew the sides, side, side, side triangle. Then we can use Heron's formula, and you do need to memorize it. First thing you do is find the semi-perimeter, and the semi-perimeter is the sum of the lengths of the sides divided by 2. Then area is equal to the square root of the semi-perimeter times 
the difference between the semi-perimeter and each of the sides. So, really straightforward example, not even an application problem. Example three, we want to find the area of the triangle using Heron's formula. First thing we do is A plus B plus C divided by 2 gives me 10 plus 15 plus 7. 7 equals 32 divided by 2 says 16. So my area is the square root of 16 times 16 minus a, well a is 10, 16 minus b, and b is 15, and 16 minus c, well c is 7. Now your calculator will do arithmetic, but usually I just do some of it in my head and go ahead and put in second square root of 16 times 16 minus 10 is 6. 16 minus 15 is 1. I don't even bother to put that in. And 16 minus 7 is 9. But if you need it to do the arithmetic, then for goodness sake, have it do the arithmetic. And I get an exact answer of 12 times the square root of 6. But assuming that this were an application and you would like to be able to measure it, you can press the little button living right above Enter, and it gives you a decimal approximation of about 29.4 units. There we go about 29.4 square units because area is units squared. Now we have an application. A Chicago City developer wants to construct a building consisting of artist lofts on a triangular lot bordered by Rush Street, Wabash Avenue, and Pearson. Street. The frontage along Rush Street is 62.4 meters, Wabash Avenue is 43.5, and Pearson Street is approximately 34.1 meters. How many square meters are available to the developer? Okay, that's very straightforward. I'm not even going to redraw this triangle. We have a really pretty triangle sitting right there. We're just going to go straight and ask Heron for help. Example four. First thing I do is compute my semi-perimeter. So 62.4 plus 43.5 plus 34.1. plus 43.5 plus 34.1 I get 140. Semi-perimeter. So I divide it by 2. Oops. Divided by 2 is 70. So area is equal to the square root of 70, 70 minus 62.4, 70 minus 43.5, 70 minus 34.1. You can do it in pieces if you want to. You could do just the arithmetic part. You could do these and write them down. It's not that many decimal places. I'm going to go ahead and put it in my calculator all at once and hopefully get through it without messing it up. Square root of 70 times 
open up parentheses, 70 minus 62.4, close, times parentheses, 70 minus 43.5, close, times parentheses, 70 minus 34.1, close. And I get... 
per hour hours cancel with hours it gives you the distance that you've gone in two hours you know that and then we just did this side across from this angle well since this was 10 degrees this triangle this has to be 180 because this is a straight angle of 180 degrees so these are tiny little angles and we just did 1,020 squared, 1,360 squared, minus 2 times 1020 times 1,360 times cosine of the angle that lived between them and ended up with about 2,370 miles, which makes sense because this is a whole lot longer than the two legs. So that is all I have for you. You have a lot of practice in your lab manual. And I have the solutions posted for you. And you have all of your web assigns. Practice, practice, practice. Put them all down on paper or on your tablet, however you like to practice. That is how you're going to get it.